call on the next speaker, um, Mohamed Hafezi from the University of Maryland again on photons in synthetic gauge fields. Maybe I can share a little bit with you on this. Um, Einstein was talking about light quanta and uh, then only in 1926 a guy called Gilbert Lewis came around and uh, said that he would uh, use these new objects which he, which he called actually atoms in the beginning, now photons. So this is where the name photon comes from. So uh, 88 years later you are turning this around again <laughs> and we are now hearing as photons in terms of atoms. Yeah, this is actually a peculiar title because photons are electromagnetic waves and we are talking about synthetic gauge fields. First, I apologize for my voice. I'm a little bit losing my voice. Uh, I thank the organizers for giving, this, uh, giving me this opportunity to tell you a little bit about the work that we have been doing at the Joint Quantum Institute. And uh, here are the people that have been involved in these projects in different uh, stages. Um, so uh, the title, as it says, it's about photons and exploring interesting dynamics when uh, they're subject to a synthetic gauge field. Uh, the whole um, motivation behind this work is to uh, really go and <coughs> uh, uh, use photonic system as a platform uh, to implement some interesting uh, models that have been known for electronic systems in the context of uh, condensed matter physics and then uh, learn interesting things about them and then uh, basically in the, under the umbrella of quantum uh, simulation. So uh, simulating interesting dynamics in, in photonic systems. But once we uh, try to translate this, uh, these quantum models uh, for photons, we realize there's some uh, fundamental aspects that are different. And that takes us actually beyond uh, the simple quantum simulation that we had uh, in mind in the beginning. For example, photons uh, are bosons and electrons are fermions. And that has a deep implication in terms of the types of orders that we expect Uh, 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 in these uh, strongly interacting systems. For example, the type of topological orders that we uh, expect. Uh, photonic systems are usually driven out of uh, uh, equilibrium. Um, in a normal photonic system, you pulse it with a laser field from outside. So uh, right off the bat, the problem, the, the, the questions of non-equilibrium physics becomes important. In, a, in an electronic system, we usually cool down the system to the ground state and we look at the ground state property. Uh, and, and then the other aspects that I will uh, go into some details uh, uh, in this talk. Um, now, uh, once we actually understand, then we might be able to use them uh, and, and think of some applications. In particular, in this talk, I'll show how uh, some of these uh, robustness that we expect in topological uh, systems uh, can uh, improve um, uh, optical delay lines, basically make uh, robust optical delay lines. And uh, can we think of, for example, optical isolators, et cetera, that are important in, uh, in, in photonics on a chip. Uh, a more futuristic uh, applications of this idea might be found in uh, uh, quantum computation, basically doing quantum computations with uh, topological states. So with that, I would like to uh, uh, talk about these topics. First, uh, I'll tell you how we can synthesize magnetic field for photons. Uh, And then once uh, we do that, basically we implement some quantum Hall uh, models for these photons, then uh, we look at the robustness uh, um, that uh, these models bring uh, into photonic systems. Then in the third part of the talk, I will talk about how, uh, what happens when we add strong interaction between photons, and can we uh, go beyond uh, just uh, uh, classical physics. Uh, and then uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, circuit QBD and optomechanics as other systems to uh, uh, explore interesting uh, quantum dynamics with photons. So the building block in a photonic system is, is a resonator. Uh, it's an optical resonator. It can be in the optical domain. It can be in the telecom domain. This is telecom domain. This is an example from IBM. Um, silicon on silicon dioxide, the photons are confined in these waveguides, a thin layer of silicon uh, of um, about 220 nanometers on a thick layer of uh, silicon dioxide. Here are uh, ring resonators, tor uh, toroidal uh, ring resonators. Here is another example, uh, exciton polariton system that I also consider them as a photonic system. There are also examples in, in circuit QED system. The key ingredient that we really want is uh, to have uh, ring resonators that can be coupled uh, together. So the easiest one is to just couple them in a one-dimensional one array. Uh, here we have a, a one-dimensional array of ring resonators that are coupled to each other. So the photons are confined in these resonators at the resonant frequency, and they can hop from one resonator to another resonator. Sorry. 
This, um, so in order to investigate this system, it's just a simple linear system, but I would like to use this quantized form, which would become uh, useful uh, in the rest of the talk. So here we have the creation and destruction uh, operator of a photon in resonator X and X plus one, and, and kappa is just a resonator decay rate. So photons jump, uh, jump back and forth, uh, uh, and then we have just a tight binding model. So the tight binding model, we know the answers. They're just block waves that go to the forward and backward direction. And if we send a photon resonant with one of these block waves, it will hop onto one of these block waves and it would come out. So if we do the experiment, basically if we look at the transmission as a function of frequency, um, so here it's wavelength, it's the same. And uh, uh, what we see is that the transmission uh, decreases when we, dec we, when we increase the number of resonators. Here we are going from 28 resonators to 100 resonators. Of course, some of it is just um, because of the loss, but the major part of it is also because of the fact that these resonators are not the same, their frequency is not matched, they're mac microfabricated resonators. And, and uh, uh, what happens is that they're not exactly the same, these block waves will scatter into each other and it in introduces these uh, strong fluctuations. And if, if the system size is actually smaller than the localization length, then all the states will uh, start to uh, scatter back and forth, and we have Anderson localization. So what should we do uh, to get around this Anderson localization is to add a, a, a magnetic field. So what happens in an electronic system when we add a magnetic field in a two-dimensional electron gas, everybody knows, we have some uh, 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 two-dimensional electron gas, we apply uh, a, a voltage, and then we measure the current in the transverse direction, and what we uh, see is that the resistivity, Hall resistivity as a function of magnetic field, has these plateaus that are very robust. They don't depend on the details of the system, not, uh, uh, they don't depend on the uh, amount of impurity uh, to some level, uh, temperature, etc. and the location of these plateaus are given by some fundamental constant uh, divided by an integer. And uh, the reason is that there, there is some topological uh, robustness in the system that I will uh, explain uh, uh, later. And that's why people have been using this as a standard for electrical conduction. So if we want to replicate the same, uh, the same idea, uh, uh, we should uh, basically apply some magnetic field to photons. But photons are uh, themselves electromagnetic wave. They interact very weakly uh, with the magnetic field. We have basically this weak magneto-optical effect in the optical domain. So uh, instead, we have to synthesize the gauge field. And I have to say, this, this work uh, has been really uh, inspired uh, by uh, many uh, uh, of the works that have been done in the uh, atomic physics community to basically synthesize the gauge field. Actually, I myself was working uh, uh, on, on fractional quantum Hall state on optical lattices about seven, eight years ago in, in, in graduate school. So I'm, I'm sort of going, going back to the, to the same subject. So how we can synthesize magnetic field for photons? The essence of this magnetic field is to have uh, something like a bohm aronov effect. We have a two-dimensional uh, now photonic gas. The photons are hopping from these resonators into each other. And the essential point is that if we go around the single plaquette, we should acquire a phase uh, that is non-reciprocal in a way that if we go this way, uh, we should acquire a two pi alpha phase. If we go the opposite way, we should acquire a minus two pi alpha phase. Uh, so more uh, formally, we should have a Hamiltonian of this kind. So uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have photons hopping uh, with this phase. And now, in order to implement this, it turns out that it's very easy to do. Uh, if you have two ring resonators coupled to each other, uh, I, I take the length of this ring resonator to be m lambda, and then this ring resonator to be m lambda, and then they're connected uh, by a resonator that, that it is anti-resonant with these two resonators. The, its length is m lambda plus lambda over two. So what happens is that when a photon is uh, resonating in this, in this one, when it wants to hop, it will only take one path. It will take the upper path and it goes to this resonator, and it wants, when it wants to go back, it will only take this lower path. These are directional couplers, so we cannot couple in this way. The reason is just uh, destructive interference of photons uh, in, the, in the middle resonator. So what happens here, if we asymmetrically position the length of these, res the, the length of these arms, uh, our photon will take a different uh, propagation phase, just e to the ik uh, 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 L phase. And uh, when we hop forward, we acquire a phase that is dif different when we hop uh, backward. So now if we tune this phase according to this uh, Landau gauge, we can uh, arrange the system such that when we go around the single plaquette, we have a phase. So now 
We have not uh, broken the time reversal symmetry, yet we have something uh, that acts like a magnetic field. The reason is that these, uh, these uh, modes are degenerate. We have uh, these uh, counterclockwise uh, modes in, the, in this resonators, and we have the clockwise mode. So we cannot think of it as a pseudo-spin, pseudo-spin up and down, and the effective magnetic field would be positive for up and negative for down, very similar uh, to the uh, um, spin orbit interaction, that we don't have an external field, yet we have something that acts like a magnetic field. Here is exactly the same. We can be a little bit more aggressive. We can put uh, uh, scatters inside the, the connecting rings and uh, some scatters inside the resonators, and that mimics an in-plane uh, Zeeman field, an in-plane Zeeman field and, and rush pattern. So that when, when I hop from one resonator to another resonator, I also flip uh, the, the, the Z component of the spin. So what, right now we have the Hamiltonian, how we go about measuring the system. As I said, photonic systems are different than an electronic system. We cannot do a conductance measurement. What do we do is, is what we do always with the photonic system. We send some light and then we look at the tra uh, transmission and reflection. Here it's, the, it's exactly the same idea. Uh, we have a, a little bit of complicated system, but it has some modes. We send a photon. If it's resonant with this mode, it will get transmitted. If it's not resonant, it would get uh, reflected. So this is a simulation uh, of a 10 by 10 uh, array. This is alpha, which characterizes the strength of the magnetic field. Um, and then this is a, just the frequency of the incoming photon. Whenever I have an eigenstate, it will get transmitted, so I put a black dot. Whenever it gets reflected, I just put a uh, white uh, dot. dot. So the spectrum, of the, the, the spectrum of uniform magnetic field on a square lattice is known. It's called the Hofstadter butterfly. Uh, and uh, for this simulation, we have actually used a torus. So basically, the system has no edge. Uh, it, the system is 10 by 10 on a torus. And uh, we see that in the simulation, it reproduces exactly this uh, Hofstadter uh, butterfly. So what happens if we don't put the system on a torus, if we just put the system on, a, uh, if, we, if it's just a square? So once the system is on a square, we re realize that uh, there are some states that appear in between these magnetic bands. And those are called edge states. Uh, so uh, how are these edge states? If I, if I look at these states, these are some of the eigenstates of the system, and I plot the uh, probability density uh, uh, for one of these states, I see that uh, they, ha they carry a current around the edge of the system. That's why they're called edge states. And they're chiral. Some of them, they go this way. Some of them, they go in the opposite way. And the ones that are going the opposite way have a different energy. So if these ones are going clockwise, these ones are going counterclockwise. So this is, uh, this is for the ones that are here. So now what happens if I put an impurity, this is the dispersion of the system. So these are these edge states and those edge states. So now if I put an impurity in, in, in front of uh, these edge states, the states want to backscatter in the reverse direction. Uh, but in contrast to this Anderson localization uh, slide that I showed, the backward state does not have the same energy. So it cannot scatter uh, 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 while conserving energy to the backward direction. So instead, it will go around the system, go around this impurity, and it continues its way. That's why these states are robust. That's why we have uh, integer uh, quantum Hall effect uh, as a robust uh, uh, feature. So now, the question is whether we can see it in, a, in, a, in an experiment. Um, uh, so for this, actually, we use uh, silicon and insulator technology. Uh, as I said, uh, we can make ring resonators, waveguides, uh, that are uh, 220 nanometer uh, uh, in, in, in size, in height, and then uh, about 10 micron in diameter, and they can be coupled to each other uh, when the waveguides are close to each other from 150 nanometer to uh, 200 nanometer. So once this uh, device is fabricated, this is a schematic, this is SEM image, these are ring resonators, and these are the connecting rings. And they're different only by lambda over two. Lambda here is the telecom uh, frequency, 1.5 uh, micron. So we cannot really tell the difference between the resonators and the anti-resonators. The scale here is 30 micron. So uh, what happens is that we can actually send photon uh, inside the system using some coupler. They go inside, they explore their destiny, and then they comes out. Uh, what is interesting here is that uh, any resonator has some loss. Uh, 
here we also have some loss, but the loss here is good uh, because it allows us to, to measure uh, the state of the system. The, uh, if we have more photons, we scatter more uh, 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 of photons in the resonator, and then uh, we can just image the wave function. It's not the phase of the wave function, it's just the amplitude of the wave function, the magnitude on each side. So what happens now if we send a photon on one of these edge states? So this is transmission as a function of frequency. And uh, 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 I apologize, the, the resolution of this does not show uh, correctly on this projector. Uh, so this is our, our, uh, uh, our eight by eight system. This is our two dimensional array. The photon enters this way and then it uh, leaves this way. If I'm resonant with the state that is going in this direction, it will enter here and it will come out from, uh, from the other port, like that. Uh, so, and that's what actually we see in the experiment. So the photon comes in and it gets out, and this is the simulation. And we see that there is a difference between simulation and experiment. Simulation was done for a pure system, while uh, the experiment was done for a, a system with impurity. So that's why the edge is, is broadened a little bit. So now, uh, we can also look at the, uh, uh, look at the uh, other band when the edge state are going in the, in the reverse direction. So the photon will enter the system, it will go around the edge like this, and it will come out. And that's what we see in the simulation and in the experiment. And now, we can also send the photon inside the bulk, inside these, these bands. Uh, what we see is the following. The photon goes in, it will excite the bulk state, and it will come out. Uh, what is uh, remarkable here is that if I change now the frequency a little bit, uh, like 0 0.1 uh, gigahertz, uh, the profile changes from this to this. But the previous uh, slide that I showed, if we change the frequency by 15 gigahertz, uh, like two orders of magnitude, uh, the profile does not change. And that's related to the fact that these edge states uh, are r robust. And these are the, some of the numbers that characterizes uh, our system. The system is not perfect. It has some on-site impurity, the frequency mismatch, the coupling is not uh, uh, homogeneous. This is a synthesized magnetic field, so the magnetic field is not uniform. It has some inhomogeneity. And we have also some spin-flip rate. These resonators are not perfect, so sometimes when I'm uh, rotating in the clockwise direction, it will flip the sign of the spin. But it's very weak, fortunately, so that's why we can see our uh, edge state. So now we can also remove one of these uh, resonators and what we see is the following. The photon comes in, instead of getting back scattered in the reverse direction, it will go around the impurity and continues its way uh, 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 in accordance with the uh, simulation. So these results were published uh, last year in, in December and, uh, and Emily Edwards uh, did a very nice uh, rendition of it inspired by Salvador Dali's uh, melting clock. Uh, that is topologically robust clock. Uh, so um, I have to say that mm -mm. Uh, so there are, there, it's actually a growing field. And these are some recent publications uh, exploring different ways to implement uh, synthetic gauge fields in photonic systems and uh, using different uh, materials. So this is like uh, arrays of couple waveguides. This is uh, metamaterial, uh, helical waveguides, uh, et, uh, et cetera. Uh, so we have also some, uh, some recent results uh, that uh, is related to the consistency. Now, if I, uh, th this is transmission as a function of uh, frequency, and this is the delay as a function of frequency. It's just a Wigner delay time. How long it takes from the photon to go into the system and then comes out. Uh, well, let's repeat the experiment many times for different chips. Uh, these chips are not exactly fabricated the same way. They're different. And when we superpose them, we realize that the bulk states uh, vary a lot while the edge states are consistent with each other. Uh, and that's, again, related to the fact that these edge states uh, are robust. Uh, we can also look into the, uh, uh, um, the, the distribution of time, the Wigner distribution. For the, for the edge states, we see that they're Gaussian. But for the bulk state, we see that they have this uh, they are asymmetric, and they, and they have this exponential uh, tail, uh, which which is related, to, uh, sure. which is related to the uh, to the. So I will skip this. I didn't actually see the five ten minute one. <laughs> so 
I forgot. So let's, let's uh, now move to the uh, more interesting one. This was, uh, this was uh, uh, yeah, I didn't see the 10-minute one. I, I slowed down. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. So, uh, so now, what, what we, what, uh, when we add interaction, we, it, it's get, it gets uh, way more interesting. So we have the gauge field. We add an interaction. It can be K-body interaction, and then we get fractional quantum Hall state. Uh, so I don't want to uh, spend more time to, to explain how we add interaction inside the system. There are many talks actually in this in conference about that. The, the, the real point here is that we have some on-site interaction that is mediated by some emitters. And now we know uh, from atomic physics uh, that this is this exactly the same model for bosons and optical lattice, that when interaction is larger than the, than the tonally, then we expect uh, 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 a Laughlin state. But what, is, what I would like to point out uh, here is that uh, there is another problem that uh, we have to think uh, fundamentally about. We cannot uh, fix the number of uh, photons. We need, uh, for, for uh, seeing some, some of these states, we have to fix the filling factor, which is basically the number of photons divided by the number of flux, which means that we have to fix the number of photons. And, and we learned from uh, uh, Serge Arroche talk this, this morning that uh, making fixed photon number is very hard, especially if you want to go to the thermodynamic limit. So what should we do? Uh, the easiest way to think is just to send a coherent field and then see what happens. What happens is the following. We have a Poisson distribution of photons. We have one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And then some of them, they match the specific feeling factor, and we form a Laughlin state in one of these uh, uh, photon number manifold. But the problem is that it's a zoo of uh, states uh, convoluted with each other. So we have some Laughlin state, but we have some other state that, that are irrelevant. We can do some uh, correlation function measurement and see the signatures of it, but it's not scalable because we always have to rely on a, on a weakly driven, uh, um, uh, strongly interacting photonic system. So instead, we have to think a little bit harder. And, and one idea is to use the incompressibility uh, of these many body states. We know that these fractional quantum Hall states are incompressible. Uh, and maybe we can actually use that into our advantage to make this photonic system. In particular, if I look at the, uh, if I look at the spectrum of the system uh, in, the, in the rotating frame, uh, it, the spectrum is flat, and then at some point it has, uh, has a gap. Uh, so if I, have, if I coherently drive the system, I'm going to drive all these states with a Poisson distribution. Not good. So instead, I just add photons one by one. I add photons one by one. I come here, and then I cannot add any photon anymore. So I, I will get trapped. Uh, against the wall. And now if I lose a photon, my one photon pump again will put me back uh, into that state. So it will be a steady state. It will not be a ground state, but it will be uh, a Laughlin state. So this, this work will appear uh, soon in, 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 in PRX. So now uh, uh, some, some words changing gears a little bit. Uh, and then asking questions, can we get even more exotic states? So Laughlin states is interesting. We know that the excitations above the ground states have some uh, fractional statistics. But we have also some other states uh, called Fafian states, and uh, that the excitations above them are, are, are non-abelian. So uh, people in, in, early nine, uh, in early 90s realized that we can have some parent Hamiltonian, that this parent Hamiltonian uh, uh, will generate a Laughlin state as the ground state. Uh, and the idea was to actually use a three-body interaction. Three-body interaction does not occur naturally in nature. It's always perturbative. But it turns out that we can actually do it in circuit QED systems. The idea is that if I have an anharmonic oscillator, uh, if the anharmonicity is this way, it's just a qubit that we all know. But if the anharmonicity is this way, such that the first two levels are resonant and the third one is non-resonant, then, uh, then uh, this uh, nonlinearity can be characterized by a three-body interaction. Uh, so once we have this three-body interaction in, in circuit QED, we think that it's possible to actually make an array of this system and then have a Fafian state as a ground state. Uh, uh, an another way to synthesize these gauge fields is to use optomechanical systems. The idea is very simple. It's just we have an optical waveguide coupled to a resonator, and then by driving it from, uh, with an external field, we can break the time reversal symmetry and imprint, imprint a non-reciprocal phase when the photon is going from left to right and right to left. So uh, I would summarize. Um, so the, I, in the first part of the talk, I just talked a little bit about uh, how we can simulate uh, this uh, time reversal invariant Hamiltonians uh, and then observe uh, these robot edge states. Uh, in the interacting part, uh, I, I mentioned a little bit how we can uh, make these systems and the challenges that we face even if we have a strong photon-photon interaction. 
Uh, and then can we synthesize three byte interaction and then briefly optomechanics. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, outlook. Uh, and I will just leave you with the outlook. And the, oh, okay, I can, I can tell you a little bit about the outlook. Uh, so uh, most of the systems that, uh, most of the uh, condensed matter systems that we know, we, they come uh, and then they have a phase diagram, they have a nice chemical potential and interaction. But chemical potential is zero for photonic system because it's just leap. So we have to find actually some ways to synthesize this chemical potential. Uh, this is the, some of the core cool questions that we have to deal with when we translate condensed matter models into uh, uh, photonic models. We have to simulate thermalization. Photons uh, do not interact, uh, do sometimes interact, but the, uh, the inelastic scattering between photons is very weak. That's why they don't, don't, do not thermalize. So we have to somehow tell them uh, to thermalize and there are some nice works actually that they uh, managed to make PEC of uh, photons. One of the interesting questions is fractional statistics. All the story that I uh, told here was, uh, was driven system. How can we uh, find the fractional statistics when, when the system is, is driven? Usually people say that I have a ground state, I excite two anions and I braid them around each other. We cannot do that, so uh, what are the possibilities? Uh, the last one is the dynamic gauge fields. I think uh, uh, Peter Zoller will, uh, will, will talk about that. So I'll, with that, I'll thank you for your attention. Thanks. Thank you very much, and uh, we have time for some questions. There is one, uh, one in the back over there. I'm going to apologize in advance. I might be way off base with this question, so feel free to let me know. Um, but I, I don't think I understand what's quantum about the fractional, qual fractional quantum Hall effect here. Mm -hmm. It seems like I could explain that all like in a classical system, um, like I could maybe make this out of like electronics or something. Um, so anyway, that's my question. Yep. Uh, yeah, so actually that's a very good question because I had the one slide on that and then I flashed it in a fraction of a second. Uh, that's why. <laughs> uh, and, and this is it. So uh, in, in quantum hall, in integer quantum hall, fractional quantum hall I discussed, but just integer quantum hall, what is quantized uh, is, is the conductance. We cannot uh, 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 map conductance into photonic system. Instead, we can only see uh, transmission. Uh, so it's actually a very relevant question how uh, these integer numbers manifest themselves in a photonic realization in the integer part. Uh, we have to go back and look at the Laughlin's argument. And, and, uh, and uh, basically the idea is that if you have an analyst and we pierce a magnetic field, uh, when we change the magnetic field from zero to two pi, these edge states move from the inner edge to the outer edge, uh, and that, then, that, that's always an integer. So the manifestation here would be that if I do uh, spectroscopy, if I just look at the transmission as a function of frequency, uh, when I change this flux from zero to two pi, I see that these resonances move. The number of times that these peaks move is basically my winding number, and the winding number is related to the churn number, which is the topological invariant, which is always an integer. It was brief, but I apologize. Yes, Mohammed, uh, for the fractional quantum wall effect, mm -hmm. so you explain you need interactions, and you, 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 you explain how to get the interactions, then you have a gap which protects, say, the Laughlin state from all excitations, but this gap is usually quite small. Mm -hmm. And how, can you hope to see the gap taking into account the inhomogeneity in your system, which is going to widen any band and... Uh, yeah. and that, that's the Achilles heel. Uh, basically, uh, the problem here would be that we ha that gap should be smaller than the inhomogeneity... Um, should be larger. Of, ...of this, yeah, it should be always larger. Otherwise, it would but not is, be... Is there any hope to have a, in so, a system homogeneous enough? Uh, so in our, in, in our system, uh, I won't say in any uh, uh, <laughs> near future, but in, uh, in circuit QD system, maybe. So uh, they have been able to actually couple many resonators to each other, but again, once we add these qubits, the inhomogeneity increases, and uh, that's, that's a challenge. What is remarkable here is that we have almost 70% inhomogeneity in our tunneling uh, compared to the tunneling rate. And yet we see, uh, we see these edges. Bill, final question. So coming back to the question of what's quantum. So you explained why 
things should be discrete. But of course, organ pipes are discrete. Is there any H-bar? <laughs> no, there is no H-bar. <laughs> Thank you very much for this final question. Let's thank all the speakers and Mohammed again. I, I understand we are now heading off for the 